On the 4th of March, Anthropic announced the release of their newest AI model, Claude 3. I know what you're thinking, another knockoff of ChatGPT. Well, I don't blame you. In the last few months, we have seen a lot of AI releases, and honestly, they do not stand out from the rest. Except for the big names like Gemini and Llama, a lot of the AI models released in recent times all have similarities, from generic answers to cultural appropriation and sometimes blatant racist ideas. These models have more clout than actual ingenuity. But with Anthropic's newest release, we might be witnessing a serious leap in the AI space. So what is Claude 3? Claude 3 is the third installment of the Anthropic family of artificial intelligence models. The company, which was founded in 2021 by the former president of OpenAI, Dario Amode, and his sister, Daniela Amode, specializes in AI development and AI model training. Their first AI language model, Claude 1, was released in March last year, with the second following quickly in July of the same year. These models were created as a rebuttal to OpenAI's release of ChatGPT. Dario had earlier shared his concern about releasing AI technology to the public, claiming it was too early to put these large language models out there. This eventually led him to leaving OpenAI. Now, Anthropic has released something that is potentially far ahead of the AI leaders right now. This is Claude 3. But how exactly is Claude 3 better than Claude, Claude 2, and Claude 2.1? Well, there are particular features this LLM has that its earlier versions did not. The first thing that makes this AI stand out is its larger context window. When it comes to large language models, the context window is a very important part of the whole operation. The context window of an LLM is the maximum amount of words it can consider at a time while generating a response. While Claude Instant and Claude 2 have a context window of about 100,000 tokens, which corresponds to about 75,000 words, Claude 2.1 has a context window of 200,000 tokens, doubling the initial amount of words that the LLM could process per query. In the press release, Anthropic claims that Claude 3 has a context window of 1 million tokens in certain conditions. This just goes to show how far apart this version of Anthropic's AI is from its earlier models. Another unique quirk of Claude 3 is the fact that it has shown serious metacognitive reasoning. With large language models, metacognitive reasoning is a kind of self-awareness. Yes, I know it's not AGI or singularity, but this is a great indicator of how advanced a model is. Metacognitive reasoning refers to the ability of an AI model to regulate or monitor its internal processes. We got to know about Claude 3's impressive metacognition from a now viral tweet from Alex Albert, who is one of Anthropic's top prompt engineers. In his tweet, he said he noticed the AI's metacognition during a needle in the haystack test. For those of you who do not know, a needle in the haystack test is a standard test used to check the recallability of a large language model. This is exactly how the test works. The engineers place a target sentence known as the needle into a large block of text or documents known as the haystack, and they ask the AI to locate the needle. This activity helps to test the recall ability and recall speed of the model. Alex Albert reported that during this test for the Claude 3 model, the AI seemed to understand that it was being tested. Honestly, this blew my mind. He said that when he asked to identify a sentence about pizza toppings, the AI was able to find it and even inferred that the sentence was out of place and did not fit the context of the document. From his tweet, the model responded by saying, here is the most relevant sentence in the documents. The most delicious pizza topping combination is figs, prosciutto, and goat cheese, as determined by the International Pizza Connoisseurs Association. However, the sentence seems very out of place and unrelated to the rest of the content in the documents, which are about programming languages, startups, and finding work you love. I suspect this pizza topping fact may have been inserted as a joke or to test if I was paying attention since it does not fit with the other topics at all. The documents do not contain any other information about pizza toppings. This is mind-blowing. The Claude 3 is able to identify tricks and traps. Could this be a step towards AGI? Well, let's watch and see. One other feature that makes this model stand out from its predecessors is its ability to interpret visual prompts. These include stuff like photos, charts, graphs, and technical diagrams. Unlike Claude 2.1, which could only interpret PDFs, this model will be able to analyze image-based queries and give responses to them. Anthropic said in their press release that this will be very useful to their enterprise customers as up to 50% of the information they use is encoded in PDFs, graphs, flowcharts, and presentation files. This AI just keeps getting better and better. Another great feature of Claude 3 is that it comes in three different forms, the Claude Opus, the Claude Sonnet, and the Claude Haiku. Each of these has its specific advantages and price. 
The Claude Opus has the highest capability. According to Anthropic, it is the most intelligent model with best-in-market performance on highly complex tasks. It can navigate open-ended prompts and slight unseen scenarios with remarkable fluency and human-like understanding. Opus shows us the outer limits of what's possible with generative AI. You can use the Opus for things like financial analysis and studying market trends. This model costs $15 per million tokens for input and $75 per million tokens for output. The Claude Sonnet, on the other hand, costs $3 per million tokens for input and $15 per million tokens for output. According to Anthropic, this model strikes the ideal balance between intelligence and speed, particularly for enterprise workloads. It delivers strong performance at a lower cost compared to its peers and is engineered for higher endurance in large-scale AI deployments. The Claude Haiku is more tailored towards speed. It is best suited for things like customer service and giving live responses. This model costs 25 cents per million tokens for input and $1.25 per million tokens for output. Now that we have seen the improvements Anthropic has made, what does this mean to the big names like ChatGPT and Gemini? Well, according to the press release, Claude 3 beats Gemini 1.0 Ultra, Gemini 1.0 Pro, ChatGPT 3.5, and ChatGPT 4 in all benchmarks used to measure AI intelligence. These benchmarks include undergraduate-level knowledge, graduate-level reasoning, grade school math, math problem-solving, multilingual maths, code, reasoning over text, mixed evaluation, knowledge Q&A, and common knowledge. In all of these criteria, Claude Opus came first, Sonnet second, and Haiku third. The only exception is in code, where Haiku does slightly better than Sonnet. Another one-up that the Claude 3 model has against ChatGPT and Gemini is the speed. The Claude Haiku is the fastest and most cost-effective model on the market for its intelligence category. It can read an information and data-dense research paper on Archive, which is about 10,000 tokens, with charts and graphs in less than three seconds. Just three seconds. Incredible. In their press release, Anthropic intends to upgrade this speed capacity. In the vast majority of workloads, Sonnet is two times faster than Claude 2 and Claude 2.1, with higher levels of intelligence. It excels at tasks demanding rapid responses like knowledge retrieval or sales automation. Opus delivers similar speeds to Claude 2 and 2.1, but with much higher levels of intelligence. One thing Anthropic prides itself on is safety and harmlessness. The earlier models, like 2 and 2.1, refuse to answer certain questions if they go against the Claude constitution. This shows the level of the company's commitment to harmlessness. The Claude 3 is no exception. If anything, they made it better. Now, not only does the LLM respond with cognizance of ethics, but it also gives context-based answers. This is a big improvement as it means fewer refusals and more context-based replies. According to the press release, the Claude 3 models show a more nuanced understanding of requests, recognize real harm, and refuse to answer harmless prompts much less often. Also, since the time of the press release, Claude Opus and Sonnet have been made available for use. They are both in the Anthropic API, which is now generally available, enabling developers to sign up and start using these models immediately. Haiku will be available soon. Sonnet is powering the free experience on Claude.ai, with Opus available for Claude Pro subscribers. Sonnet is also available today through Amazon Bedrock and in a private preview on Google Cloud's Vertex AI model garden, with Opus and Haiku coming soon to both. Now, the big question remains, should you use Claude's Sonnet, Opus, or Haiku? And what should you expect when it comes to using this AI model? Between the three models of this particular AI tool, the Sonnet has proven to be the best option for many reasons. One, it's unpaid, and when put side-by-side -side GPT-4, which is OpenAI's paid model, it does really well. Testers have reported that when asked the same question, Claude gives a slightly better answer than GPT-4, often taking into context humor and logic. The problem with the Claude Opus, though, is that there isn't much difference between its capabilities and that of the Claude Sonnet, even though it's the paid version of the model. This means that, in many ways, the Sonnet would answer the same questions and provide solutions to the same problems that the Opus can. And at the end of the day, the question remains, why then is it necessary to get the paid version of the model if there isn't too much difference? The only reason I'd ever get the paid version of the Claude AI is because of the daily limit set on the Claude Sonnet by the company. Testers have reported that the Claude Sonnet often has a daily limit depending on the traffic of the day. So sometimes you can only get a few prompts through before you're told to come back the next day. This can be quite limiting if you have serious work that you're trying to carry out with this AI tool. 
So if that's your situation, then you should consider getting the paid version. However, apart from that, there's absolutely no need to pay for the Claude Opus. You can stick to the free version and still get similar results. Overall, Claude has proven to be a huge benchmark in the world of AI technology, and we cannot wait to see what this release will mean to the world in a few years. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to also turn on your notifications so that you're the first to know when we upload new content. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.